part nine, London. It's like 9.30 in the morning. I just arrived in London, took a train across the city, dropped off stuff at my friend's house, and now I'm ready to hit all the good spots. First things first, Hatton Garden. I wanna go see my gem cutting buddies. I brought a copy of my History of London's Lapidary article that they helped me write. So I'm giving them out and showing them all the good stuff that we made together. And the beginning of a very fun, but probably short-ish week in London. Uh, gonna see a lot of gem cutters, museums, lots of friends, breakfast, lunches, and dinners with people every day. So the usual craziness of one of my favorite cities. We're gonna see an ancient pub during the quiet hours. It's just before lunch. And we're gonna come back here tonight after dinner and see how wild the mitre gets. So we're in London. Um, we're having some beautiful, delicious food. This is halloumi. And this is a burrata. And then we got a nice Indian flavor bowl with some drinks. First, you're hidden. Ooh, then it's somebody that we know. Ooh. Hey, well, we're in London. And we're, we're in Trafalgar Square. And this is Nelson's Column, looking down to Big Ben. Yeah. And the center of power in the United Kingdom. Wow, and we got all the museums art, National Gallery, Portrait Gallery, other beautiful things everywhere, and a giant ice cream cone with flies. <laughs> the, that is the famous fourth plinth. Now we see what it's like after work. It's nearing the end of my first day in London. But my last little walk, I wanted to go check out the historic gem district. So we got St. Paul's right behind me. And where are we at? Cheapside. So probably once upon a time, Cheapside looked more like this. Smaller buildings, older. These aren't that old, but they look older than what Cheapside has become, which is this super modern glass shopping center. But back in the day, and I'm talking 500 years ago, this was the district for your gems and jewelry. This is where you'd find your gem cutters. This is where you'd find your jewelers. And all of them were right along this place. A beautiful old wooden building that burned down in the London fire. And in the early 1900s, right over there where H&M is, they found the Cheapside Hoard. If you don't know about the Cheapside Hoard, you should check it out because it is awesome. So if we walk a block or two down from Cheapside, we have this building, which is the Goldsmiths Guild Hall. This is where the goldsmithing trade and really the entire gem trade has been ruled from for the last uh, 700 years. I think the, I think the goldsmiths uh, guild started in like the 1320s and they've got handwritten books that go back all the way to the beginning. Uh, wasn't ever directly connected with the world of gem cutting, but was directly connected with the jewelers who were the gem merchants, gem Gem cutters were not allowed to be gem merchants, only goldsmiths were. So all gem merchants had to abide by the rules of the goldsmithing guild. Otherwise, 
they could not do business in the city of London, which is where we are, the square mile. So today we're in Weatherspoon, so I've taken Justin out for a salubrious dinner in a traditional English establishment. Um, it is traditional and it is English, but it's really not salubrious. But if what you want is a cheap pint, but good beer and pedestrian food, this is where you come. Okay. Hello. We are currently in the jury section of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And here is a gorgeous selection of lots of rings of all different types of gem species. where we can going to go and see some really big pieces of gold and also some very impressive emeralds and stuff. And then these are just minerals from around the world. Natural, very impressive collection from the UK. I'm back in Haddon Garden, and geez, it's cold out today. I had to get the chai latte. Uh, I have a class at Gym 8 tomorrow, so I had to get some supplies, make some plans all morning. Now it's about almost lunchtime, but I got one gem cutter that I want to visit this morning, my buddy Keneal, so we're going to go over and see what he's doing. Maybe he'll even let me uh, take a video in the studio and show you guys what a London lapidary looks like in 2022. So just, just coming in to visit, see what these guys are up to, working hard. free hour on this last free day in London and I thought what better to do than go to the National Gallery.
where are we right now? Why are we locked in this thing? Who knows me? <laughs> what do you mean? You got us in here. Okay, now we're out. So in London, had to come check out Bobby White's store. I like to watch this guy's YouTube videos and we were right here, so why not? We might have stepped into danger here. <laughs> I couldn't go through London and not show you Bond Street. This is where all the brands are at. Fashion brands here. All the jewelry brands are down there. Imagine it's the 1800s, or really any period in the last maybe 500 or more years. Imagine that you're a farmer and you spent most of your life outside on the land with animals, with plants, with family, all the dwellings that you've ever seen are homemade by you or your father or your grandfather. And then for one reason or another, for pleasure or for desperate measures, you come to London, the city, the center of the island. And you are so overwhelmed with the magnitude of all things. And we have to understand that this is probably the cleanest period in London's history. If we go back to the 1800s, it probably looked exactly the same, except for it was horses and smoke and soot and everyone smelled slightly worse. It's Friday morning. It's my last full day in London, and this is probably the most exciting day of all. I'm on my way to Gym A to teach the science of gem cutting class. So this is a class that I wrote during the pandemic, meant to be a COVID-friendly distance learning class, and now has been transformed into a full day, one day workshop experience I got a bunch of samples, I got a sweet PowerPoint, I got a lot of fun stuff to tell the students and teach, and I'm really excited. This is gonna be so fun, and I'm really excited to be presenting it at Gem A. So when I cross this metal barrier, technically I'm no longer in London. If I remember correctly, I'm now in Cambridge, or at least Cambridgeshire. And I heard a story, so we're, we're one block off Hatton Garden Gem District. Um, right down this little passageway is that old bar that we were at the other day. And that little path leads to Hatton Garden. And I heard a story that once upon a time, someone was doing a gemstone robbery and they were running from the police from Hatton Garden and they ran in here and this is a dead end. There's only two ways in, which is the gate that I just came in and that little pathway. So they ran in here and the London police cannot come in here because it's out of their jurisdiction. I forget how the story ended, but I assume either they came in anyway or a police officer from Cambridge had to come down. But as far as I know, they don't have to do it like that anymore. But kind of just a little interesting tidbit Saturday morning, got my luggage all packed up, time to catch some bus that's going to come over here, take me to the rental car, and we are out of London.